Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be learning uh, from 2 chemistry and the topic for the lay will be structure of the atom and the periodic table. Our subtopic for the day is electronic configuration. So previously in our previous lessons we looked at the atom and we were able to calculate the atomic number and mass number. You can check out those videos for the previous lesson and see how we calculated the atomic number and the mass number. So for our lesson today, we are going to learn how to draw energy levels and electronic configuration in specific. And then how can we represent this electronic configuration using dots and cross structures. We are going to get an opportunity to do a bit of some practice and then we will end the session. So first of all, we will talk about the energy levels and electron arrangement. So energy levels are usually orbits uh, in the atom where electrons occupy. We also call them energy shells. They can also be referred to as energy shells. They're usually numbered as one, two, three, starting with the closest one to the nucleus. So we, we number them according to how many levels they have. So electrons occupying the same energy levels have the same amount of energy. And then uh, when we are adding electrons in the energy level, uh, the energy level can accommodate a certain maximum number of electrons. So the first energy level or the first shell can accommodate a maximum of two. The second shell can occupy a maximum of eight electrons, and the third shell can occupy a maximum of eight. This only applies to the first 20 elements. We have a different way of representing the energy levels when we move past high school, which we will use the orbitals and the SPDF orbitals. So for today, we are going to go up to the, we'll do a bit of some fourth energy level, but they are not going to be filled in the maximum side because of 20 elements. So let's do a few examples. First, we have hydrogen. Hydrogen has only one electron in its outermost uh, energy level. We know it has one electron because it's atomic number one. And we said that the number of protons are equal to the number of electrons in a neutral atom. So we, when we start distributing it, it can only fill the first shell, that one electron. It does not have any other electron. So the configuration will be one. Uh, looking at helium, which it, uh, is atomic number two, so it has two protons which are equal to the number of electrons in a neutral helium. So we have two electrons. These two electrons can be filled in the first shell fully. So the electronic configuration would be two. We go to chlorine. Chlorine is atomic number 17. So it has 17 electrons. So when you look at 17 electrons, the first two electrons will occupy the first shell. Or the first energy level. If we remove those two electrons from 17, we are left with 15 electrons. We said that the second shell can take a maximum of eight electrons. So if we look at the 15 electrons that are left and the second shell can take a maximum of eight, so we have enough electrons to fill the second shell. So we fill the second shell. When we fill the second shell now, so far, we have used up 10 electrons. So let's remove those 8 electrons and see the remaining. So if we subtract 8 from 15, we are left with 7 electrons. So these are the 7 electrons that have been left. These 7 electrons cannot occupy the third shell fully. The third energy level or the third uh, energy shell can take a maximum of eight, but we are only remaining with seven. So those are the seven we put in the last shell. Another example is 
the following table. So let's do these examples. So hydrogen is atomic number one. So it has one electrons because the atomic number is the number of protons, which are equal to the number of electrons. So the arrangement is one. It holds only one electron. So that electron occupies only one energy level. Helium is atomic number two. So it has two electrons because the electrons are equal to the number of protons. So the ele electrons can occupy only the first shell, which can take a maximum of two. Lithium is atomic number three. So we have three electrons. So also, these are the number of electrons. So we said the first shell can take a maximum of two. So we will put the first two uh, electrons. When you look at the, the electrons that are remaining, when you subtract uh, 3 minus 2, you are left with one electron. The second shell can take a maximum of 8, but we only have one. So we are just going to put that one. Beryllium is atomic number 4. So it has four electrons. So when we put the first two electrons in the first shell, we are left with two electrons. So 4 minus 2, we are left with 2. The second shell can take a maximum of 8, but we only have 2, so we will place that 2. Boron is atomic number 5, so it has 5 electrons. So the first shell can take a maximum of 2. When it takes a maximum of 2, 5 minus 2, we are left with 3. So the last of the 3 electrons, you put it in the second shell, because the second shell can take a maximum of 8. Carbon is atomic number 6. So it has six electrons. So the first two electrons will occupy the first shell, and then the four that are remaining will occupy the second shell. Nitrogen is atomic number seven. It has seven electrons. So the first two shell will occupy the first uh, energy shell, sorry, the first two electrons, and then the five that are remaining can still occupy the second shell. Oxygen is atomic number eight. It has eight electrons. So the first two electrons will occupy the first shell, and then the rest six electrons will occupy the next shell. The next shell, which is the second shell, can occupy a maximum of eight. Fluorine is atomic number nine. It has nine electrons. So the first two shell will two electrons will occupy the first shell. And then the rest seven electrons can comfortably occupy the second shell. Neon is atomic number 10. It has 10 electrons. So the first shell will occupy two electrons. Then the next shell can occupy a maximum of eight. And those are the eight electrons remaining. So we put eight. Sodium is atomic number 11. So it has 11 electrons. So the first shell can occupy a maximum of two. The next shell can occupy a maximum of eight. So when we take our 11 electrons and remove the first two electrons, we are left with nine electrons. The second shell can occupy eight electrons. So we put those eight electrons because they are excess. We have an excess of one electron. So that one electron automatically goes to the third shell. So you notice the difference between neon and sodium. For sodium, it had 11. So the first 10 will occupy the first shell and the second shell, but the 11th one can only go to the last shell. Magnesium is atomic number 12. It has 12 electrons. So the first two electrons are occupied in the first shell. Then the next eight electrons are occupied in the next shell. So now we have a total of 10 electrons. The remaining two electrons go to the third shell. Aluminium, which is atomic number 13, has 13 electrons. So the first two shells, two electrons are occupied in the first shell. Then the next eight electrons are occupied in the next shell. And the last remaining three electrons go to the third shell. Silicon is number 14. It has 14 electrons. The first two electrons go to the first shell. The eight electrons go to the second shell. So, so far we have 10 electrons. So the remaining four electrons go to the last shell. Phosphorus is atomic number 15. So the number of electrons is also 15. 
So the first two electrons go to the first shell, then the elect eight electrons go to the next shell, and the remaining five electrons go to the last shell. So the next thing we are going to look at now that we are able to arrange them, right, the electron arrangement, we can represent this electronic arrangement in dot and cross diagram. So we are going to use dots and crosses to represent electrons. So when it comes to the diagrammatic representation, we use circles. So first of all, an example is lithium. Lithium is atomic number, atomic number three. So the number of protons is three and the number of electrons is three because they're always equal in a neutral um, in a neutral atom. So the number of neutrons of lithium is four from what we had discussed in the previous lesson. So let's represent this first in an electron arrangement. So when you look at the number of protons is three. So the electron arrangement will be 2.3 because 2 point, sorry, 2.1, 2.1. So we have two electrons in the first energy shell and one remaining electron goes to the second shell. So how do we present this in the dot and cross? So first of all, in the nucleus, we are going to put the symbol of the element. In this case, the symbol is lithium and then we enclose the nucleus. So in the first shell, we are going to place the two electrons that we had. So we can use dot and crosses. So let's use dot and we put them in the spaces because we said that they are always constantly moving. They are in orbit. And then we draw the second energy shell and we place the remaining electron. So let's do the same with magnesium. Magnesium is atomic number 12. So it has 12 electrons. It has 12 neutrons. So when you look at the configuration, we have two electrons first in the first shell and then 10 electrons are remaining. So we put eight electrons in the next shell and two that are remaining in the last shell. So when we present that, we put the symbol at the center, we close the nucleus, then the first shell, we will place the first two electrons. So this time around, we will use the dots uh, so we can put the two dots. And then the next shell, we are going to put the eight dots, so two and eight. And then the last shell, which is the third shell, we will put the two electrons that are remaining. And then let's go to aluminium. Aluminium is atomic number 13. It has 13 pro, uh, electrons and 14 neutrons. So when you look at the configuration of aluminium, it's going to be two. The first two electrons goes to the first shell and then eight electrons goes to the next shell. So we have a maximum of 10 and the three that are remaining goes to the last shell. Let's present that using dots or crosses. So first we start with the symbol which is AL at the center and we close the nucleus. Next we start with the first shell and we occupy two electrons in the first shell. Next we go to the second shell. We put the eight electrons, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then finally the last shell, we put the three electrons that are remaining. So let's do a bit more examples. So we have nitrogen, which is atomic number seven. So the configuration is going to be two is to five. So if we draw that, we are going to put N in the nucleus. And then the first symbol, we put the two electrons, the first shell. And then the second shell, we put the remaining five electrons. Chlorine is atomic number 17. So it has 17 electrons. So the configuration is 2, 8, 7. So 2, 8, 10, and then the remaining 7 in the last shell. So we will put the symbol, which is CL, at the center. And then the first shell occupies 2 electrons. The second shell occupies 
uh, eight electrons. And then the last shell will have seven electrons. So you cannot mix the dots and crosses. You have to use only one type. Finally, we have argon. Argon is atomic number 10. So it will have atomic number 18, sorry. And then the configuration will be 2, 8, and then 8. So 2, 8, that is 10. And then the last 8 electrons go to the last shell. So let's represent that. So the symbol is AR. So the first shell uh, takes two electrons. The second shell will take eight electrons. And finally, the last shell will take eight electrons. Let your shells be better. <laughs> uh, mine are a bit not that uh, clean. You don't have to use a protractor, just sketch it well so that brings us to the end of the examples so you can try a bit more on your own especially on the 20 elements and see if you're able to show them so see you in the next lesson